Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple jersey skirt. Now this is the one I made earlier today and it's made with a cotton stretch jersey fabric and you can see it's it's very very straightforward, no dart shaping or anything like that, it's just a tubular skirt with a piece of elastic in the top. Now fabrics for these you've got to have a stretch fabric. Now this one is a cotton jersey from Art Gallery and it's absolutely lovely and soft and very, very comfortable to wear. So we are going to make a made to measure pattern and I'm going to tell you how to transfer your, your measurements of waist and hip and skirt length onto a piece of folded paper. Obviously take a piece of paper that's going to give you the length of your skirt as well as the width of your skirt across your body. Now when you take your measurements, don't pull your tape measure too, too tight. Just pull your tape measure so it's comfortable on yourself. And put your tape, the first thing to do is put your tape measure around your waist and take your measurement. Now when you take that measurement, you've got to divide it into four. Now, my measurement is 84. So I want to be working on a piece of folded paper and dividing 84 into four gives you 21. So what you want to do is get a ruler and mark on 21 or whatever your size is on the paper. So you're putting your first line in there at 21 or, or your size. And then we've got to find out where our fullest part is on our hip. Now to do that, pop your tape measure around your fullest part. And where your fullest part is, pop a pin. And just pop a pin on your clothing, just very lightly. Don't stab yourself though. And then you know that's going to be your fullest part. And then from your waist measure down to where you've got that pin now remember that number because we're now going to use the fold of the paper then we're going to take that number whatever it was in my case it's um, about eight inches i'm working in inches and in centimeters hope you don't mind tend to work with four. So I've made that little mark on there and now we need to draw another straight line right across the paper. Now make sure you get your, your line very straight because this is going to be your hip line. If you're unsure that you've got it straight, if you don't have a dot and cross paper like me, you could be using newspaper, um, you could be using um, dressmaking tissue, use a set square or try and square it off with, with something square and take your line right across your paper. Now mark on your paper, now that is your hip line. Okay, so now when we took our hip measurement before, I need to just divide mine which is so remember, take your hip measurement, divide it by four, and mine is 25.75. So then take your tape measure and put it along. Remember, this is a quarter of your hip measurement, and mine is 25.75. And put a little mark on that line that we've just drawn in as your hip line. So you can see where our waist is, our waist ended here, our fullness of the hip ended here. So what we're going to be doing now is putting in just a very light curve to join up the two lines. Now you, I don't know whether you, you may have one of these dressmaking curves, the, this one I absolutely love and I think it was, I can't remember what make it was, I do have them in the shop as well. 
but I've had this one all the way through college. You can see it's had a crack in, it's been taped, but it's been well worth the money. And the curves on it are really good as well. So you can now draw up, and that is an absolutely perfect curve, all the way down to eight inches. I think they're about 11 pounds or 12 pounds. I do have them in the shop as well. Right, so we've put that little curve into the hip line. Now, we need to really know what skirt length we're going to be wearing. Now, to, to start off, drop the, the lowest number of the tape measure, the very, very beginning of the tape measure, to your hem length. Now, this skirt I've got on that I made, I think it's about 20, 25 inches. So what you have to do is draw a line 25 inches on the fold of the paper and mark it. Again, get your ruler, square it off and also you just if you don't have um, a dot and cross paper like me, put a set square on and you'll get a nice straight edge along your paper. Now that's a shorter length skirt, so that's the, the, the this length that I'm actually wearing today. But if you wanted to do a longer length skirt, you would take your tape measure again, you would drop the one to the length that you wanted it, so say it's mid calf, and hold it to your waist, I can see there now that my long skirt would be 33. And it might be a good idea to actually pop the 33 on the edge of the paper and then you're actually creating a pattern for a long or short skirt. So I've marked 33 on there. I'm just going to draw in the 33 line there and that gives me two options whether I want to make a long skirt or a short skirt. Okay, so from that hip line that we drew in before, draw yourself a straight line right down to the hems of both the short skirt and the long skirt. So now we've got our quarter piece of our skirt. Now sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of shaping in from the hip to the hem because otherwise the skirt is going to be just very, very straight all the way down. And it's very nice just to have a slight taper coming into the hem of your skirt. Now to do the taper, I normally come in an inch from the actual hem itself so the line that we've just drawn, come in an inch and mark it and taper it from the line, our hip line. So hip line to hem of skirt, taper. So what you've actually done is put a tapered line in can you see the skirt shape there? So that makes a nice taper into the skirt. Now because this, is, this pattern is just for stretch fabrics, because it doesn't have any ease or any allowance in for you to move around in the skirt, but making it for, with stretch fabric, the fabric itself is the ease that you're gonna need. So we need to put on a seam allowance. Now, I don't know whether you've seen my little videos before, but this is my little chicken stick, and we go all the way around the edge. This little stick is marked at 1.5. I mean, you can measure it with your tape measure, or one of these 
and it will be able to put your seam allowance on. Now I'm going to be using the pattern that's my taper. So I'm remembering to put this stick to the tapered line and not the very first line that we put in. Because I want to make this skirt to taper into the leg. is on there and we also need to pop it on to the top. We want 1.5 centimetres on the top like that. So we've got 1.5 centimetres marked all the way around on the pattern. So this is the extension part of the skirt that I'm going to just I'm going to cut along. I mean, you can leave it on and fold it back, but you can always add it on to your fabric if you want to make a longer length skirt. So you could put on here skirt extension and that'll give you the length if you wanted to make a maxi skirt. But for this um, demonstration today, we're just going to be making the shorter version skirt, which is just for me below the knee. So we've got all our lines on. Now then, um, we need to pop on a hem allowance. Now, I like to do probably about three and a half centimetres on the bottom of the skirt, which is going to be our hem allowance. So I'm just marking below the short line. Three and a half centimetres. I'm going to put a line along there. And I'm just going to continue down on the seam allowance that we've already done. That's basically it. That's our made to measure jersey skirt pattern. Now this will cut out. Remember, set your skirt extension piece just to one side. So cut around all your dashed lines that you put in at 1.5 centimetres around the edge of the pattern. So what this is going to give you now is a complete skirt front. And the skirt front and skirt back is exactly the same piece of pattern. We've added our seam allowance. So when you open it out, that's the, that's the piece of pattern which is shaped, which is for your skirt. So if you pop it on the fabric. Take your fabric, your fabric will be folded in half. This is a spotty piece of fabric. Now this, I think this may appear as a cloud nine. Now that they'll have lovely cotton jerseys as well. So make sure your fabric's nice and flat. It's always a good idea to wash your uh, jersey fabric as well because if it's cotton, there might be a little bit of shrinkage in it. So make sure it's nice and flat. And you would cut out, pin this on, and cut out your two pieces. This gets pinned. Keep 
keeping your pattern in your paper. And if you're working with a fabric print, keeping it nice and straight. You can see the slight taper that we've got there coming around from the hip down to the hem. It does make a nice difference to the bottom of the skirt as well to have that little bit shape. I mean, these skirts can be sewn on a normal sewing machine, they can be sewn on an overlocker. And if you have it, if you don't have an overlocker, just use a little zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, and it allows the, the fabric to stretch. I absolutely love sewing and working with a jersey fabric. It's your favourite of all fabrics. So make sure you've got plenty of pins in as well because. Jersey fabric does curl and if you've got plenty of pins in. So that's ready there now for you to cut out two pieces. Now I've cut one out earlier just to speed up this video. And once you've got the fabric cut out, clip it at the sides and then go on your overlocker or your sewing machine and stitch down both sides of the skirt. Now I'm just going to show you if you don't have an overlocker. That's the, that's the stitch you would get with a, a zigzag on your sewing machine and you can see that it's going to stretch. So that's a little zigzag. Or you may have a, an overcast stitch on your sewing machine either. And you just come down the edge and then you just trim away the excess fabric when you're finished and that gives a nice edge as well and when you open it out it still allows your fabric to stretch. Now I'm just going to sew this one on the overlocker. That's the one I did earlier. That's the long version of what I'm doing at the moment this out of the way and get the scissors okay so I'm just going to be sewing down the sides of you can see I've got a, a navy thread on here sometimes I don't change I'll just show you what I've got the colors on I have neutral colors on the on the the end ones because inside the fabric is quite a light color and the only one I change is the first needle. So the first lot of stitches that go in are the dark stitches, which represent the, the material inside. And these three here just blend in with the background of, of the fabric. I mean, you can put uh, four dark colors on if you wanted to, but I just, the minimum changeover on threads, I, I like to work with. And then we've got our 1.5 seam allowance on here. So that's what we're going to be taking off. I'll find the foot pedal. Taking your clips out as you go, you notice I've had this all clipped and not pinned because if you get a pin in the blade of your overlocker, you would have to have a new blade. And look how easy this is when you're sewn on an overlocker. If you don't have one, I think I would be safe enough to get yourself one if you want to do a lot of sewing. If you can hear that mobile phone going off, that's my husband's phone on his desk. I just heard it. And it might go off again if you hear a strange noise. We both work in this room, but 
you can see there's more equipment in here which is mine than actually my husband's it's a good workroom Edges. It will take you a little bit longer on the sewing machine, I have to say. But if you did your little zigzag stitch all the way down the sides of your skirt, then you would just need to trim away the excess fabric. Try not to sew your zigzag stitches on the very edge. Come in your 1.5 centimetres and then trim everything back because it, it is much easier if you work in your fabric than trying to work on the edge of a stretch jersey because that's very difficult. So that's the two sides sewn and that's the end of the overlocking. So you can see how, how easy it is to make. So the next thing that we need to do is, let's put that to one side. We need to cut a piece of elastic for our waistline. Now, if you just take your elastic, pop it around your waist, just so it's comfortable, and then take the exact measurement. And that's my husband's phone going off again. Add two inches to that, and then make a cut. Because the two inches, I want you to just fold over one inch in front, one inch behind, and just stitch it on your sewing machine because it does, and then and you make a, a loop out of this. Now, your loop of elastic, I want you to divide up into four. You know how we worked before with the pattern, dividing the hip and the waist. So if you divide this into four as well, that's the centre back. So what I've got here is centre back on the zigzag stitches that I've joined the elastic with, centre front, put these two together, sorry put these two together, I was just matching them there, and then mark on the, the side seams, I just mark on the sides, this is a fabric marker pen. Now do exactly the same with your skirt. Put your two side seams together. Mark your centre front. And mark your centre back. At this moment, actually the back and front are the same, but it's when you come to put the elastic in, you want the the piece that you've joined together at the back of your skirt. Now what we've got to do is work from the right side of the material and pop your elastic face down onto the edge of your material. Now you can clip these on, you can pin these on I'm just clipping these quarter points on first, so that's a quarter point going onto the side seam. Bring this over the top. So if you just clip on your quarter points and then you can work in the, the excess. There's not a lot, it's probably about two inches. That, um, if we've got to work in any elastic. So those are our four quarter points on. You can see that little bit of excess that we've got in there on each quarter. There's not a lot of, so what it, what you do, you just stretch it like that and carefully put a pin or a clip in the middle 
do it better if I've just got a look at it this way. Make sure you don't pleat it. You need a little bit more of the excess onto that side. Because what you want to do is evenly put in that little bit excess. Just test it. Oh, put that one on. No, that wouldn't have happened if we had pins in. You might have stabbed your finger though. So just clip it until you've got all your elastic evenly spaced around the skirt. I need probably one more in there. Now I'm going to put this one on. You can use your sewing machine. You'll have an elastic stitch on your sewing machine. That, and it looks like a zigzag stitch, but it has little stitches that make up the zigzag. You'll see it's sort of a little dotted um, stitch on. Or if you don't have that stitch, then just use a zigzag stitch. And what you want to be doing is stitching close to the edge of this elastic just a zigzag stitch all the way around but I'm just going to be doing this one on my cover stitch machine because it gives you the same the same finish so I'm just going to do this now Sorry, I'm just sitting here just out of view but you'll hear the machine working Well, the cover stitch I'm using is a baby lock cover stitch and I have to say I absolutely love it. It never fails. And I'm just going to be going around the very edge of the, the top of the elastic, taking the clips out as I go, stretching the elastic so it fits the top of the skirt. made us jump. I don't know what it was. It's still stitching. Probably the needles just hitting the elastic. So if you just keep stretching your elastic and easing up the fabric to the top of the skirt. Sometimes can be a little bit tricky because jersey fabric does roll a little bit at the top. So just take your time when you go around the very top edge. And you'll be fine. Always try and remember your quarter points as well. Keep them matched. Again on this cover stitch I've got two navy blue threads and I've got one white thread on the end. The two navy blue is going to give me my twin needle stitching when I do the hem of this skirt. Also it helps to put the, the elastic in on the top as well.
using the adhesive I'll be able to show you exactly where I've stitched on this elastic. to show you what I've just done. I'm just taking away some of these overlocking threads. So what I've done is I've I've just popped in the elastic with the with the cover stitch. Now you can see I've got some little pieces of fabric just to the little top there of the elastic so it, it can trim them back. But all I've done is I've just used a twin stitch to go around the edge of the elastic and the cover stitch machine allows your elastic to stretch as well as would a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. So I'm just cutting off all these tiny little pieces from round the top edge of the band. But it gets it joined nice and evenly. This elastic now rolls over and if you didn't take these off, these, this excess fabric, it just adds bulk on the roll over and that's what you don't want because your waistband won't lie flat. So that's it and it's just those tiny little pieces but it does make a difference. So what you've got, you've got a skirt now which is looking like that. Of course we don't want it to have the elastic out the top. So this elastic now gets turned down. Slightly different from when I did the, the children's legging pattern. I mean, um, you can make a casing and put the elastic in, but what I like to do when it's for a skirt, you don't want extra fabric around your waistline. So I just like to use the elastic turned over on the inside and it keeps nice and flat when you wear your skirt. Now, on the back, to keep the back down, I normally put a little label. There's one in, there's one there. So this one says handmade. Um, So on the back of the skirt, what I'm doing, I'm just pinning, let me find a pin, this label onto the back. So it's a handy roller label because it has little cut lines on and it gives you the exact right uh, size of the tag. So you can see I'm just turning in the label and this is going to give us the back of the skirt and that label actually goes over the joining like you joined flat um, before when we did the circle of elastic so I've just pinned in a label at the back now that's going to tell me that's the back now this this little mark this blue mark it will wash off it's a water soluble um, dressmaking pen where that line is it's going to match up with the seam line down the side of the skirt so and what we want to be doing there is stitching into that seam line right through the elastic and that's what you call stitching the ditch now that will keep the sides of your skirts down so we've got the back which has got your label we've got the side seams going to be kept down with the 
the stitch in the ditch so I'll fold that one over as well and pop a pin in now these can be sewn on your sewing machine with just a straight stitch so once those are in and stitched your tummy actually keeps down the front of your skirt so it does it does lie flat against your tummy so I'm just going to put these two lines in here well there's actually four I'm just going to do those little four lines I'm just going to switch machines so just on a straight stitch just check 2.5 which is a normal standard seam allowance and pop in these these lines just a couple of lines on there don't go too much forward and back because you don't want to get your needle stuck in the jersey fabric so what I've done I've just sewn down and sewn back on reverse hold the back band down so that's the back in now this one is the stitch in the ditch there's the hip in your elastic down on the hip just reverse it back up to the start again put the long threads on and then all we've got to do now is the hem You can actually see how easy these are to make, even if you have to start and make your pattern. But then when you've got your pattern, you can make any amount of these skirts. So you can see the way I've stitched in the in the edges of the skirt. So I've got the, the one in the back, the one in this side, and the tummy part of the skirt. Once you've got it on elastic does stay down in your tummy so now all we've got to do is is the hem so I mean I'm going to be using my cover stitch machine for my hem and the jersey fabric does roll it is so when you have a, a jersey fabric if you can put your pins like that and then it, it flattens out and the longer the pin the better you can see the fabrics rolling it was actually rolling when I was cutting it out so it's a little bit jagged on the edge but if you can get long pins and just put them at short intervals like that then you'll be able to stitch your hem because on a cover stitch machine or if you're using a twin needle you'll be working on this side stitching along well you, you need to be sure that you've got your fabric as flat as possible on this side so this is going to take some time and some patience to to sew around to pin and then stitch and I mean, I'm pinning on the I've got your pins in on the wrong side but you'll be able to see I've got the heads of the pins which can be easily moved from the right side from when you start and sew. You can easily pick these pins out. You can see this hem is just all over the place and I want some nice long pins. It's 
going to pin this up and then go around on the cover stitch machine. I'll show you some samples of if you don't have a cover stitch machine, if you've got your normal sewing machine, there's a couple of ways you can hem your skirt and one's with a twin needle. I don't know, I'll see if I can find one just to show you what I used to use before I invested in this machine. Excuse my husband's phone. It's somebody liking an image, I think. It's probably my two daughters are trying to get in touch with them and um, sending them these messages. See, once you start and control the fabric with your pins in this direction, then I'm coming to the end now. That's just the phone again. Somewhere, somewhere on the desk. Okay, so I'm down to the final few pins. I think I might just have to get rid of that phone. I've got my phone on silent for this video and John's coming from work and his phone is on his desk. So that's the hem. Now then check. So pop your skirt together, fold it into the quarter again and just check that when you have everything lined up that you've got your hem the same length all the way around okay so that looks right got the nice tapering on the side can you see that as well so it runs down then it tapers in slightly it's rounded up on this part and it tapers in slightly on this towards the hem. I'll just show you a sample of, um, before I do that, I'll just show you a sample of a, a blind hem. Uh, sorry, a, um, a twin needle. I can find a twin needle to show you what they look like in my drawer of needles. There we go. So that's a twin needle. You can see it's got the the one part this goes into your machine and then you thread two needles follow the same threading system just bring two threads over and that is a, a twin needle now that one is a stretch twin so you could use that for your skirt now they have different spacing between the needles I like to get a four millimeter spacing between a stretch um, needle which you can see Two, two lines just running down there and what it does on the back it gives you a zigzag and it allows your skirt to stretch now if you don't have a twin needle you can do a very very tidy zigzag stitch on the hem of your skirt as well so you've got two options you can use a twin needle or a zigzag stitch and always trim away once you've done it on your sewing machine trim away your excess fabric close to the stitches and it does give you a nice finish on the inside of your skirt so i'm just going to for the purpose of this one i'm just going to quickly run round the hemline of this skirt on the cover stitch machine and i think i might find this phone and pop it in the hole when I play like this back it will be um, getting us annoyed and 
I do have a lot of patience. Right, so I'll just go around the hem on here and let you see what the finish looks like. Almost round. I just can't wait to see what it looks like. All done. your twin stitches as well. Just go slowly to do the joining and get them perfect. So that's done. So that's the hem of the skirt in. So that's the hem in now. A nice twin row of stitches all the way around the bottom of the hem. So that's the shorter version of the made to measure jersey skirt. So there we have, we've got a short one there and this is the longer version here. And these are lovely for the summer, very, very cool in the summer and warm in the winter, especially if you make the long one. So this was the long version, which I'll be wearing, hopefully when I open the shop back up. So that's two there. So what I, because I do like stripy fabric, I do like spotty fabrics. This is a nice jersey as well. I've got this one in the shop. So this one, I'm gonna make in a long skirt. And I don't know whether or not to make a knee length or a long skirt in this one, I'll see. But I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you start to make yourself some jersey skirts because to me, jersey is the best fabric to sew with. So I'll see you later and thanks for tuning in. Bye bye.